Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. We're going to take our August look at flesh and blood sales data off of TCG Player. I previously did the July look and we had seen that there were some minor buyouts happening with early boxes from the first six expansions and those did not continue into August. So all the August sales numbers are down. What I'm really going to be looking for here is to what extent the price followed. Did the prices drop also with that drop off in demand, the drop off of whales coming in and starting some minor buyouts of these old products? This is the 32nd month that I have done these data collections for flesh and blood sales on TCG players. So subscribe to get all of those and the future ones. First off, welcome to Wraith Unlimited, Arcane Rising Unlimited, and Crucible of War Unlimited. And you can see it right here, especially in the blue line of Welcome to Wraith on the cumulative box sales plot. And I have the horizontal axis set to two months. So you get July with these big buyouts, and then you get August that was relatively quiet. And you can see how much of the vertical ascension of this blue line was in August, was only this tiny bit compared to these 120 boxes in July. So if we bring up the month over month table to look at the raw data, we have the total July number of boxes sold, the total of August boxes sold, and the month over month percent difference. And you can see that a drop of 83% in Welcome to Wraith Unlimited after 16 cases were bought on a single day in July, just nowhere near that kind of uh, devouring of the product in August. And then we have the average box sale price in July, the average price in August, and the month over month change in average box sale price. And then we multiply those together to get the same for the revenue numbers. And see, this is what's interesting to me. Welcome to Wraith, even though the demand was way, way down by over 80%, the price went up 16%. And that's where I start to ask questions like, is the supply finally tightening up enough? to see another rise in price. We had a rise in price about 18 months ago, over about a six month period, all these old flesh and blood boxes came up in price, 30, 40, $60 each, and then they gave all of that back over the next six to 12 months. So it may be time that they're starting to do this again. It is very, very interesting to see a 16% increase in price in a month where the demand was down by 83%. So moving on, Monarch First Edition, Tales First Edition, and Everfest First Edition will bring up the plots. And you see you had these uh, large increases in July, and the increases in August were only a little less. So the box sales didn't plummet as much as they did for those first three expansions. And you can see that here that the change month over month, minus 31% for Monarch First Edition, minus 59% for Tales First Edition, and minus 50% for Everfest First Edition. Now here, I pretty much look at these kind of price changes as only barely meaning anything. You know, I'll typically talk about price changes of plus or minus, say, 1% to 4% of being kind of noise, and beyond that, it might kind of mean something. So minus 7% on Monarch First Edition when the box sales month over month dropped off by 31%. That seems pretty reasonable that the demand for the boxes was less and dealers lowered prices and those lower prices stuck enough that other dealers lowered their prices beyond that and they were all just racing to the bottom to move some boxes in the face of the lowered demand. And we see the same thing with Everfest First Edition. Interestingly, we had a 5% increase in Tales of Aria First Edition, but it has been selling well for a couple of months now. So it may be that it's just the number of boxes listed on TCG Player is getting low enough. As usual, we'll take a brief stop through History Pack Volume 1, and we'll see July box sales were 17 and August were 21. Nothing to write home about, and month over month price difference went from $94 to $90 for the average box sale. Moving on to Flesh and Blood 2.0, Uprising Dynasty, and Outsiders. And the sales plot is not as dramatic as the others in terms of the split between the two months. Minus 33% of Uprising and total boxes sold in August compared to July, minus 24% for Dynasty and minus 65% for Outsiders. Interesting again, plus 10% in price for Uprising and plus 7% for Outsiders. I would not expect at all that these boxes are becoming 
rare or that the supply is tightening up. It's going to take at least another year, maybe two years for that to appreciably happen. But a move from 60 to $66, yes, it's a 10% change, but I don't really think that is that interesting. It doesn't really indicate much. Dust Till Dawn, Bright Lights, and Heavy Hitters. We'll put those up there on the plot and bring up the month-over-month -month tables. Dust Till Dawn, minus 37% in box sales. Bright Lights, holding steady, only minus 7%, going from 45 boxes to 42. And Heavy Hitters, flat at a scant 26 boxes. The changes in price, really nothing to write home about. Nothing interesting going on there, especially since these are some of the newest products and changes in price really aren't going to be indicative of the supply in the market. It's more of just dealers trying to unload it. Part the Mist Veil, vale, we'll take a look at that and bring up the month over month table. 161 boxes in July, 92 in August. This released, I believe, on May 31st, so the June numbers were really great. It was close to 500 boxes, if I recall correctly, and then you get the kind of normal TCG market life cycle on a product and it drops off as the months go on. The biggest demand is always in the first month that it's released and available. Everybody wants to get a hold of it right then. 3% change in price is not interesting on a brand new product when it's still holding around that minimum advertised price. Now, I do not have Rosetta on here. It comes out, I believe, September 20th. So a lot of the pre-sales will not have been happening in August. When I release the September video, I will have it and it will have been in full release for 10 days by that time. Now, we'll go ahead and bring up these last four sets and we'll adjust the horizontal axis to have the release day in line for all four of these products. And we'll look at how the purple line of Part the Mist Veil vale has done relative to the three previous releases and we see it's holding that same performance we saw during the July update where it had crossed over heavy hitters, the yellow line, and stayed above it and still way above bright lights, but it's not going to catch dusk till dawn. So it's good to see that part the mist veil has outperformed the last two sets that had dropped off so hard from what dusk till dawn did on TCG player and hopefully they continue to improve in the future. Like I said, I have done these updates for 32 months now. I have the entire data set, and it yields some interesting things about the history of flesh and blood sales on TCG Player and what it might mean going forward. Hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Thanks to everyone who makes this content possible, especially my very generous supporters on Patreon. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade.